Welcome back to a very British space program. We're on episode 32. Last time we put up, uh, well, four of these satellites you can see on the screen right now, forming a new tr con communications constellation. Um, I believe that's completed our governmental task to improve communications for the Empire, I mean Commonwealth. But um, yeah, um, the next one seems to be they want to do a GPS system, which might be a bit too much for us. So if you like, please like. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe. And let's get going. So we are still at the start of 1964, and this is the 25th of February, and we are launching the third of our Faraday missions, our true Faraday missions. This is mission F-003. On board, we have experiments in the form of power tool evaluation, simple navigation, and zodiacal light photography, which um, is an intriguing one, isn't it? So the crew on this flight are rookie engineer Elaine Lewis and rookie pilot Michelle Lloyd. Um, they're not going to do any rendezvousing or anything like that. This is purely a scientific mission that we aim to develop skills in orbit. And uh, the craft goes up okay. You can see there the uh, the standard approach of the uh, the Faraday ones going up with its nine Spectre engines on the second stage there. And shortly we're just having a look around, we're just checking these engines and shutting down a few, just just practicing different ways of doing this. So what we actually did was we uh, we shut down some some center and side engines and just tried to basically change our approach and, and burn times because the actual launch on this was not perfect. I am not using uh, uh, Mechjeb's PVG or whatever it's called. I am doing this with, with Smart ASS, which basically means a manual flight. Um, not the best uh, launch in the world. Um, we're still trying to figure out the best profile for this and when the best time to shut engines off. Anyway, we get into orbit, we decouple the capsule. We could actually uh, go short of orbit and then have the the pod on the top there complete the orbital burn so we don't leave debris and we may do that in the future but um, the Faraday only has uh, Faraday one only has a few more missions to go we have uh, I think it's slated for five or six Faraday missions before we move on to the next evolution of this um, which we're actually working on now um, which will basically just be preparing it for its next role in our space program so they have done their sort of 20 hours around around the planet in orbit and then it's time for them to come home and it's a very sort of uneventful flight in, in reality you know they're both rookies they've carried out their scientific research and uh, it's time for them to come home and um that's that's pretty much it they reorientate the, the capsule which is the first time they've actually done any reorientating of the capsule um, they've done very limited maneuvers on on orbit and this is probably one of our least sort of involved missions we decided not to take we do have some missions available we're just detaching the uh, the service module there and again we're still putting that service module detachment on just as we're coming into the atmosphere which i think we may need to review actually i think uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at some different protocols for that because yeah we, we're risk we're a bit risky just like soyuz changed its program for decoupling its service module i think we may have to change ours but you can see it's a beautiful shot as it comes down um, yeah, there are some missions available for uh, orbital maneuvers and orbital changes, but that requires that we stay in orbit for, I think, around about seven days on average for those, a couple of days in one orbit, a couple of days in another. This craft is not currently capable of doing that, primarily due to battery life, the electrical charge. So we need to look at extending that. Um, we could stick a big batteries on this, but it makes it heavy and we can't launch it on the, uh, the, the Trident 2 if we do that. So... We have to make a decision do we go for a bigger launch vehicle which is a possibility uh, we could go that but i do like fitting it on the 150 ton pad because we have a lot of those lying around or and there we go parachutes out landing down nice and safe or do we actually look at modifying the craft there a little bit we will we will see um so there we go faraday one down safe now next up it's gonna be a quick one we're just gonna throw up a, a rocket this of course is a uh, uh, a Blue Knight 2 going up, one of the Blue Knight 2s. You can tell by its engine arrangement because we've got nine of those Tau engines. So the Tau engine is pretty much a modified um, RZ-1-2 or um, an S-3 if you're American or an S-3D, which is instead of using kerosene liquid oxygen, it's actually using kerosene and HTP high test peroxide. So it's very, very British, very much like the fuel sources of the Black Arrow but it gives us a bit more grunt. 
And then on the next stage there, we've got a rings of our Spectre engines, which seem to become our workhorse for sort of getting onto orbit. And on the top there, you can see we've got our intermediate transfer stage and another of our, well, it's it's another one of our Hesperus 4 craft. And this is gonna be the, uh, the Messenger 4, and this is going to Venus. So we're gonna send another probe to Venus because our last Venus probes, this has got some more advanced scientific equipment on board. So we're gonna send it there just to do that. We've also got the ability for it to stay around Venus for an extended period of time. We could put solar panels on this, we have not. Um, however, while that sits in orbit, we have an old craft coming and this is Hesperus II Vesta. You can tell by the arrangement of solar panels and it is arriving in the sphere of influence of Vesta. This is our first interaction with Vesta and you can see it's, it's quite far out. Those solar panels are actually having trouble just about getting enough solar power. So the, the craft is actually being been lying dormant as it's traveling, um, primarily because it just cannot provide enough energy from those solar panels anymore. So it's been lying dormant. And you can see here, as we come towards Vesta, we start firing out what's left of our fuel reserves because we're just trying to, we don't hope to get into orbit around Vesta. It's not, we don't have the Delta V, but we're just trying to slow our approach as much as possible. Get every second in that, around that body as much as possible. So we're just gonna use all of that fuel up. We're not, we're not gonna guide it anywhere. We don't think we're gonna get another interaction with Vesta. So we're just going to, um, we're gonna let it just burn off its fuel and it will be basically be spent at that point. Its task is to just gather the science it can from around Vesta while it's there as much as it can. And you can see there Vesta, very quite a small body there. And we've done actually quite well getting into its sphere of influence. So as we drift away, we're just gathering all that science, and that will be that will be the end of the mission for the, for this craft. It will float back into into planetary space, um, and it's going to basically sit in an orbit that's between sort of Mars and Jupiter, with a little bit of ellipticalness to it. And it's going to stay there for uh, for quite a while now. And we're going to get quite a bit of science from it. We're, we're basically offloading as much science as we can right now from Vesta transmitting it back we're not got the best signal you can see there but we're just getting as much science as we can so that is Hesperus 2 its mission is over and on to the next one so this is the 8th of March 1964 and we are looking at a launch of another development of our Davy capsule so remember the Davy capsule is a one crew capsule it's basically a crew capsule within a, a protective cover okay and this is an alternative to our our Faraday capsule. It's also potentially um, looking at longer term sort of use. So this is the Day V2 and it's flight D002. And on board is scientist Rita Hamilton. And she's basically going to be working on long duration stay. That is her mission on this one. So we're launching it up and you can see the, the traditional sort of launch of the Triton 2, the, the Trident 2, Triton 2, the Trident 2 uh, going up there. And it, it's pretty much gonna just stay there. It's gonna get itself into orbit. We have a nice-ish profile. Again, we're just working on what's the best profile for this. Um, we have modified these uh, these upper stages in the future with just engine cutoff because um, you know we, we figure out that actually around the 30 second to completion mark is the time we wanna do a cutoff. So you can see there, we've cut off four engines. The four outermost engines have been cut off and, and we leave that center section. And there we go. Decoupling of the Davy, you can see it has uh, small engines, got two instead of four, unlike the uh, Faraday, and it's got a little bit of, of fuel in those little tanks just for or orientation and a little bit of return. And this craft is very much just about staying in orbit. And so she's gonna be in orbit for about seven days, but we're gonna go back to Rita in a minute. First of all, we've got something else to do though. So just four days after that launch, we have on the 12th of March, 1964, we're gonna send the first of what we're calling our emissary missions. Now this is um, based on the Hesperus 4, but we're actually it's actually the Hesperus 5. And this is gonna be one of our atmospheric missions. So it's gonna be a, a, a Hesperus craft with a landing craft on top or a re-entry craft or an entry craft. We don't know if it's a re-entry, I suppose. It's not re-entry because it's never come from Venus, but this emissary mission is going to Venus. It's gonna basically go at the same time as Messenger 4. Messenger 4 will act as a relay, as will the, the Hesperus craft that this is on. And you can actually see it's got two capsules, one on each side of it. And they are re-entry vehicles that we're gonna to use to uh, try and enter into the, the Venusian atmosphere. And again, it has that standard intermediate transfer stage. We are really pushing 
the Delta V requirements for this one. This is a, this is a tight launch for us um, and we have pushed it to the limit. And one of the problems that we have comes up in a second, which is as soon as we actually manage to get into orbit and we decouple that upper stage, that transfer stage, um, we identify that we don't have the avionics requirement. We've actually overfueled a little bit because of that additional payload. So what we actually end up having to do is vent a little bit of fuel just to, uh, to sort that out. But let us sort that out and move on. And now we're back. We're back with Rita. And this is the 16th of March, 1964. So after about a week in orbit, she spent about seven and a half days in orbit. She's completed all of her scientific experiments. She's tested her long duration uh, flight. She's ready to come home. So she uh, reorientates the craft. She's going to pop it into a, uh, a retrograde position and she's going to basically fire those little engines, to try and bring her out of orbit. You can see on the mission clock, she's been there seven days, 17 hours. So over a week, um, I believe that is a new record for us. She actually holds the record um, for, for longest duration. And this will be a pause moment for the, the Davy project. Davy project was all about longevity and can we actually stay up in orbit for longer than the, the two, one or two days that we've done previously. Um, we have proven that now. So now we're ready for the Davy project to move on to its next step, which is gonna be uh, pretty much guiding us into uh, longer term duration. Um, so she comes through the atmosphere here and we have actually got a bit of an odd um, an odd fly like return to atmosphere there. You can see we're off center and we, we actually have a big difficulty trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, there is something going on. There's a, there's a phantom torque with the capsule we're not entirely sure of. And this is an, another reason why Project Davy is going to pause for a while. Once we hit some of the thicker atmosphere, it seems to sort itself out. But orientation prior to that was not the best that we've ever seen. We also, we have quite a bit of, of G-force on the way down. It's quite a fiery re-entry. Um, and Rita, Rita's, Rita's okay, but uh, we hit a peak of around 7.5 to, to 8 G on re-entry, um, which is not brilliant, um, but she's completed her mission. She's coming down through the atmosphere. We've got a very strange wobble on the cap, so we get a little oscillation going there, which, which is concerning prior to, prior to parachute to deployment fully. So it's partial deployment caused a, an, an oscillation in the capsule. Again, something we need to look at and possibly look at redesigning. What we didn't get was the heating of the capsule that we, we've had in previous missions. So that was a su success. Davy is, is done and on to our next mission. And this is this is the one that you know we're doing for the money. So with all these Hesperus craft going up, we are actually basically using a backlogged old set of uh, Blue Knight ones to, uh, to get money. So this is a Blue Knight one, and again, it has our Newton payload on the top. And this is this is gonna be another, yet another commercial satellite contract, again, for more geostationary weather contracts. We're British, what can we say that, you know, we love the weather, everything we talk about is about the weather. So this one is going up with its payload again. And this time we actually did use, for the first time, I think, this ascent guidance, I actually put the ascent guidance on to see what it was doing. Um, and I, I don't know if I like it or not. But anyway, we, we, may, we may resort to that again in the future. I don't know. And then we're going to just plot our nodes out here. So we're going into a, a geostationary orbit. And again, it seems as though we're getting quite a few missions to put weather, con weather satellites above Australia. I wonder why. Could it be governmental possibly? I think it probably is because of our launches. We have quite a few... Uh, plans coming up for some big changes to our to our launch schedule, shall we say? Um, I think we're going to see the manned missions taking on a bigger role at the moment. They're primarily 150 tons launches from from uh, Spade Adam, but we may see some of them coming from Australia soon. And for that, we really need to be aware of weather conditions because weather around the UK we know, but Australia, yeah, it's a little different. So. We're doing our little burn out there towards geostationary transfer orbit. And uh, once we get out there, it's all about changing inclination, changing our uh, periaps and bringing it up into a circularized orbit and, and, and whatnot. And it's, you've seen us do this before, so I'm not gonna slow it down or talk too much. We've done our, our transfer to geostationary at our, our um, I think it was our ascending node. And then we're gonna do our, our circularization and plane change at descending node, which is also our apoaps now. It's a really nice, easy way to do it. And what we do is we don't completely circularize. We leave it on a bit of a, well, you can see there, it's, it's not completely circular because what we're trying to do 
is actually wait until uh, what we've got now is a, a shorter period so the the site of the earth will move slightly faster than us underneath our satellite and uh, if we wait long enough what will actually happen is we will get to a point where we're above our target at our apoaps and that's what we're hoping for so you see here we're just going to do it we're going to be pretty much over our target there and we can do that thing now we did that in uh, in about two days if we were really, really trying to put it over a specific individual sort of, you know, meter squared space on the on the surface, we would actually take our orbit to almost geostationary and then do it. But we did it roughly. So while we finish off that burn and until next time, have a great one.